We find ourselves at the foot of the Rockies, Denver, Colorado, for this edition of the NFL on EA Sports. Today, we've got a Week 5 matchup in store here, as it'll be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on the Denver Broncos. Seems like we were just starting training camp, but here we are in October, and off we go on EA Sports. They'll elect to bring it out here from the end zone. And he'll be dropped at the 21-yard line. So bringing it out of the end zone proves not a good decision. Loses him about four yards. <laughs> Throwing on first down. Sharp. The pass is caught by Kate Otten. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. An early statement on the game's first play. 18 yards and a first down. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. They go play action here on first down. And the Broncos get there and take him down. Baron Browning from his outside linebacker spot, forcing the sack for a loss of eight. And Charles, part of the reason they lost last week, they didn't have a single sack. Well, they changed that quickly. But did they ever? And it was something they talked about with us extensively. They needed to get pressure. How were they going to get to the quarterback? Obviously, they schemed themselves into a great play, didn't they? Looking to throw on second down. Sharp. It's caught by Mike Evans. That one good for 17 as they're set up better now for third down. That's a good bounce back play right there after taking a sack on first down. Didn't quite get it to the marker, but now they're in a much better spot for a third and short yardage call through the offensive coordinator. You like looking at that section a heck of a lot better than trying to figure out third and long. And he's got the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 49. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? That looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. Show a first and ten now in Denver territory at the 49-yard line. They stay on the ground with White. Down to about the 45. And hold on here because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. But you look at this Bronco defense. They come into this one ninth in the NFL against the run. They've established themselves as a top 10 run-stopping unit in the NFL here in the early going. All signs point to me towards them continuing that throughout the season. They look pretty good, pretty darn cohesive to me. And he's certainly not a guy that drops that football very often. Indeed, because that's a bit of a surprise. I know he's in the middle of some traffic and people, bodies all around him, but he usually has the focus to haul that one in. Seventh play of the drive upcoming here on third and six. Back to throw. Sharp. And he's going to be swallowed up. Sack back at the 45 yard line. Drew Sanders in there to get him. And that is sack number six now for him on the year. Fourth down. So Jake Camarda is out there. And Marvin Mims deep for Denver. He'll send this one into the mile high air. And it's a good one. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line. And it continues into the end zone for a touchback. <laughs> They'll start out here with the option left. 
And he's going to get this one across the 30 yard line. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. That may be a sneak peek on this opening drive of what this young rookie can showcase, his legs. And normally, as you start a game, you're just thinking, can he get the snap? Can he hand off? Can he just execute? Instead, he doesn't waste any time on wrapping another dimension to his game, showing off those wheels, and picking up some nice yardage. The Broncos at 3-1 and one here through their first four games. And they come in off a disappointment last time out. That put an end to their modest three-game win streak. The key for them, generating offense and finding a way to put the ball in the end zone. I mean, you get held under 10 points in your last game. Very hard to win in the NFL. Frankly, it's very hard to win in any league scoring that few points. And that's a good acceleration there as he's across midfield to the 48-yard line. That one good for 13 and a Denver first down. But just a simple tap pass, but it pays off in a big way. And sometimes the simple stuff causes the most problems for a defense because there's a breakdown in communication there. When that receiver goes behind the line of scrimmage and it looks like he's going in motion, someone either has to go with him or he has to be passed off to another defender. Somehow they didn't get that communicated well and it turned into a nice play. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. That time he was looking for Jerry Judy. And it's second down. Good play. You look at this defense for Tampa Bay. Against the pass, they're toward the middle of the league, number 15 in the NFL. So I'm prepping for this game. I kept asking myself the question, what's keeping this group from being top 10 in the league against the pass? And too many mistakes, especially little mistakes. And those add up into big mistakes. Big mistakes add up into points against you. Nice back-to-back -back plays defensively. They're stacking momentum now. One incompletion, two incompletion. They're going for more. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. They'll look to throw again. And it is caught. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the box 33. 14 yards that time for number 14. Give the rookie another one on this opening drive and a first down with it. A nice start, Charles, for the first-year passer. He's come out, made a few plays, nice plays to begin this contest. He certainly has, and if he finishes off this drive with a touchdown pass, I vote we don't call him rookie anymore. We'll move him right to veteran and continue from there. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. From the 29, here's the second and five. And they'll send Judy in motion left. Now an option play on second down. They run for the first time with Javante Williams. And he is into the end zone for a Denver touchdown. Javante Williams, his seventh rushing touchdown of the year. And the Broncos are on the board first here this afternoon. An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like the boxer in the gym, preparing for the fight. Now he's getting turned it all loose. Now after the touchdown, ready to boot it away, Riley Dixon. And we'll see a return here from the end zone. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and ten. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Completion here, second and ten from the 20. 
to throw again. Sharp. And his throw is going to be incomplete. They've given him some different looks here defensively in the early going. He's only hit two of his first five passes. With a big third down coming up, he's hoping he's got a play dialed up that can take advantage of whatever the defense throws at him. The threat of a second straight punt to start the game is looming as they come up third and ten. Should have been a pick. Should have been a pick. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. Again, he'll drop to throw. He'll get that out to the flat to right. Now a second and six. Back to throw again. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. What we're seeing so far is the defense is certainly coordinated. Both levels doing their jobs in tandem. The back helping the front, the front helping the back. The pressure got home on that last play and forced him to try and throw through contact and short of the sticks. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And that's going to be incomplete. Lock him up, he has to lock him up, play him, play him. You gonna go for it, right? It's a long time not fun. Yeah, that's right. That you gonna go for it. for a second remember next week they have the open week so they're going to get some extended rest does that change how they manage the rest of this one i think it does Damn, you got to block him by too much because you're right you get the extra rest you get a chance to oh, you got to block that guy do a little bit of a reset for this team but it's also seven extra days to think back to the last time you were on the field so now a little more importance on what they're getting done because they carry it with them for essentially two weeks Now he'll look to throw here on second and ten. That's complete. It's Greg Dosich. And all the way home for the Broncos score. Greg Dosich, his second touchdown of the season. And the Broncos are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. When they drew that up, I don't think they envisioned it ending in a house call. But he got it and took it all the way home. Really impressive run after the catch, wasn't it? That was a, that was really special by him. But let's face it, in today's NFL, those tight ends are all the wide receivers, or maybe even sometimes bigger running backs. They just put them in a position to get a great matchup and make plays like that. Now after the touchdown, ready to boot it away, Riley Dixon. This will be brought out from the middle of the end zone. And he's probably realizing he should have stayed in the end zone as he can only muster a return to the 14-yard line. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. And they're in a bind early here, down 14-0. Are you worried at this stage or still too early? You're worried. You're just trying not to transmit it to the rest of your team. You want to make sure that they stay positive. But at the same time, you're wondering, how are we going to move the football? What do we have on this play sheet that can work? Get back to basics is usually your answer. And make sure you find the guy who can move the ball fastest for you if you just get it in his hands. Yeah, still second quarter. You get points on the board here. I think you're feeling okay. 
Sharp. That is incomplete. Oh, that's some good closing speed there defensively because that was good for a minute. That's great work with the ball in the air. Never gave up. Converged on his man and broke the play up. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. There goes a deep ball in zone. And that would be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. The scoreboard tells the story for him a little bit bleak, and while it's not quite desperation time yet, it's definitely getting close, but the defense reads the scoreboard as well. They're going to back up and make them really earn it. They'll try and sneak it here. Oh, the defense right there to stop him. Did he get the yard he needed? He did, says the referee. Barely. First down. They only needed a few inches, and they didn't get much more than that. But by about the width of a shoelace, they convert on fourth down. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. They will run with White out of the shotgun. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. Off the play fake. Sharp. He'll be brought down by the Broncos. It's a sack. Nick Bonito coming in for that outside linebacker spot, and he buries him for a loss of seven. Two minutes to play, first half, it's 14 to nothing. A long way to go here on third down for the eighth play of the drive. Back to throw, Sharp. Open man, it's Palmer. He's in the space past the 25. Touchdown, Tampa Bay! Trey Palmer, his first touchdown on the year. And the Bucs have cut it back within a score. They were already down two scores early. They needed something to try to stem that tide, and that certainly qualifies a big play to get them in the end zone. It qualifies indeed because, let's face it, they don't get something done on this drive, turn it back over. This game could be 88 and out the gate early. What, 88 and out the gate? Yeah. What's that? Well, listen, I used to hear my old man talk about it. Usually meant that thing's done. Well, now that they got the touchdown, it's, it's not 88 and out the gate. We still got a good game going ahead of us. And this will be returned from deep in the end zone. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. At their own 21-yard line. The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. Well, this offense looks like they have a little extra pep in their step as they take the field here for drive number three. Because remember, Charles, drives one and two both ended in the end zone. Yeah, right now they just got to be careful not to lean into overconfidence because every drive has a life of its own. But I like the way that they've started, the way that they're going about doing things right now. They've got a chance for that third consecutive touchdown, and that would be a crushing blow to the defense. Buying time to his left. And he slings one that's incomplete. They certainly did a nice job improvising there, extending the play, hoping someone would come open downfield, but they never did. Back to the air on second down. Jarrett. And this will be incomplete. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they didn't completions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. If you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Check back, check back. Right 
Operating from the gun, Jarrett. That's caught left side by Judy. Yeah, he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. But it looks like they got what they wanted. They got the completion, but they weren't able to break any tackles or gain nearly enough yardage to pick up the first down. Now to be fourth and short. And in their own territory, needing only a few inches, they're going to line up to go for this thing on fourth down. They'll send Judy in motion left. They'll send a receiver in motion to the right. Hey, check that, check that. Street, street. They'll try and throw for it here. Able to find the open man. That's complete. Down to the 10. And all the way home for the Broncos score. Jerry Judy, 59 yards. And the Broncos will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. A gutsy call. Fourth and short. They go for it. Look at the result. Yeah, now they did. They go for it. They threw for it because, to me, it was stacked up for a run situation. Strength on strength, and they decided to put the ball in the air. And what a result. Big-time play. He will return this from deep in the end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Cost him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. The Bucks' offense set to begin their next possession. Well, not much time remains here in this first half. We'll see if they can get something out of this drive, at least a field goal. They could certainly use Looking for Evans, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Pat Sertan. And they'll start out with great field position at the 47-yard line in enemy territory. Incompletion. Now, even though this drive started in plus territory, they're still not in field goal range yet. So they can work towards another couple of stops and not allowing that turnover to hurt. Throwing again on second and ten. Jarrett flushed out right. Got a man open at Sutton. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. That one good for 13 and a Denver first down. Looking to throw. Jarrett. Well, this is caught by Williams. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And the pass is caught. Touchdown, Denver. Jerry Judy. A great effort there. With his second touchdown of the game, fourth of the year. And the Broncos take a three-touchdown lead. And now before we get to the extra point, remember all touchdowns do have to be confirmed by the replay official. Now the try here for the point after. He knocks it through. It's 28-7. Now after the touchdown, ready to boot it away, Riley Dixon. 
But from deep in the end zone, he's going to bring this out. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. And the ball backed way up. So thinking with this amount of time on the clock, probably just sit on it, and we'll see these two teams go to the lockers. Yeah, I don't think you want to overthink it in this situation. Either side of the ball, just go ahead and finish up the half and get on out and talk about it. Up at the 29 now, they'll head to the line. Second and a yard. Back to throw. Sharp. Oh, everything falling apart now. Another one intercepted. And his guys have got it back at the closing stages of the first half. And Brandon, how many times have we talked to these rookies out there and then we finally hear from them that the game slowed down and they're able to handle things? Not so far for this rookie because right now, back-to-back -back drives, they picked him off. Not college football anymore. He's got to find a way to handle what these defenses throw at him. And that is no good. And the lead will hold at three touchdowns. One of the few things that hasn't gone right in this first half. They had a chance there for late points, but this one winds up off the mark. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. And they'll have time for one play. There's two seconds on the clock. A final shot before break. Sharp airing this one out for Evans. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. So two quarters down, two remain. Charles and I return after the break. Welcome back. Halftime over. We are ready for quarter number three. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Broncos with a lead, and they will be receiving this kickoff here as quarter three is underway. And this will be returned from deep in the end zone. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. Denver offense at the line, ready to go. Well, this offense, this team, they are rolling right now, Charles. They've scored on three straight possessions. You look at the scoreboard, and they pretty much right now got this thing on boost control. Yeah, and this is that time of game where you and I have to be prepared, right? This is kind of like the empty the bucket time where you have to go into the block material and make sure you have some different things. That's what we're staring at right now, the way this one is going. Mims in motion right. And he'll get it here on the touch pass. Oh, that is well read defensively. A great job of setting the edge. And that little touch pass is going to turn into a loss. This defense not fooled one bit on that touch pass. And this has become one of those kind of in vogue plays. You know, kind of like the shuffle pass was a few years ago. This one never got off the ground, but you understand why a lot of teams are running it. These wide receivers, a lot of them, they run like running backs with the ball in their hands. So they'll get eight out of that completion. And now we've got a third and three. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. They'll try and run for it. Here's Williams. And this is only going to be a gain of two. He needed three. It's fourth and one. And now the Bucs deciding to take a timeout defensively. It's just their first, so two remaining as they burn one here in this third quarter. It would appear Sean Payton's made the decision here. They will go for it on fourth. And boy, is he close. Did he get there? No, they're going to say he shorted the line to gain. He tried to do it himself, but couldn't find his way to the marker. And the Buccaneers defense holds, and they get the football back. 
The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. On first and ten, Sharp. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. Operating from the gun, Sharp. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. And there's another stop. One of the league's best defenses is certainly bringing it again this week. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Off play action. Sharp. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds. Incomplete. They certainly are running up today, partner, because they forced big turnovers already. And it's been incredibly tough for them to get yards against, let alone put points up on the board. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Oh. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. He's to the 15. And in for the Buccaneers touchdown. Mike Evans, 72 yards. And the Buccaneers are able to make some inroads here to that deficit. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there's an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard, you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. Their lead down to two scores after the touchdown a moment ago as they start with a first and ten. Throwing to start the drive. Jarrett open there. He completes it to Judy. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Ball on the 30, they'll come up with a second and five. They'll run out of the gun here, Williams. And he stopped immediately there. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. They'll come up facing third and five. Looking to throw. Jarrett. He's got his target. That's complete. And he will have the Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try to put the hammer down and finish this one off. And they'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 11 yards there, just like last play. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Off the option, he'll try and run with it. It'll be a pickup of five on the keeper. It's second down. Oh, man, that wasn't far from breaking in a big way into the secondary. Read option, quarterback kept it. And while he didn't get a first down, he did get a nice chunk of yardage. Only a nice tackle prevented it from maybe going all the way. On second down, Williams. And 
Matt Shedding through the tackle. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. And Brandon, you know that expression? He just does what he does. It sounds trite, doesn't it? But in this case, it's perfectly apt. This is one of the better runners in the NFL. And all he does is just find avenues, find ways to pick up key first downs and big runs. And he'll take this down to the 33. In my book, that's running the ball well, but with intelligence. How about him keeping the clock moving, staying in bounds? Yeah, even though it's the third quarter, you're thinking ahead, aren't you? This is where your running game can really help you with a lead in the second half. I agree totally. It's not just end-of-the-half situations that you worry about the clock. It's throughout the game. And with a lead, stay in bounds. Make them fight harder to try and catch you. Temporarily out of field goal range now as they come up on a second and long after the holding call. Following the penalty, it's Williams. And he will force his way forward for a yard or two, but I have a good feeling this will be coming back. All right, so they got that one, Charles, against the center. And let's remember how difficult it is for the center because remember, he's got to snap the ball to put the play in motion. And sometimes you got that big guy on your nose. You got sometimes where he's coming at you at an angle. It's a difficult job for him to snap the ball and then execute it. Uh. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Well, this at least is the right idea. I think they've got to get the tight end more involved. He had just one target in the first half, incomplete. Now incomplete here with the first target of the second half. Yeah, it should not stop them at all from going back to him. Uh, find him. Find him. Ninth play of the drive now on third and a country mile. 60 Maverick. 60 Maverick. Trap 60, trap 60. Back to throw. Jarrett. Oh. Uh -huh. Sometimes the game is pretty simple. Put a few extra defensive backs on the field, give them nowhere to throw the football, force the incompletion, and get off the field on third down. Here's Riley Dixon now. And the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. He punted three times in the loss last week as he sends this one away. This is taken at the 15. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Welcome back now to Denver. It's Buccaneer football, but they've got work to do. They find themselves behind here to start the fourth quarter. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. Well, still a long way to go, but trending upward. They scored the last time out, you remember. Then their defense forced the punt. Now they try to inch closer, but still ultimately down two scores in the final quarter. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. Looking to throw. Sharp. And this one is incomplete. Give it big credit for his coverage right there because when he saw the route break deep, he stayed in position to prevent a completion while avoiding any risk of a flag. To throw on second down. Sharp. And he's going to be brought down. Back at his own six-yard line. Baron Browning picks up his second sack of the afternoon. I remember throughout my career here in defensive coach, I always say, guys, you got to earn the right to rush the passer. And they put themselves in a great spot with this big lead, and they know they've got to throw the ball. These pass rushers have to be salivating. It is pin your ears back time indeed. Now on third and forever, he'll look to throw. And he's going to be intercepted for the third time thus far. Picked off by Pat Sertan. Busting free at the 10. Certainly not what he was hoping for, Charles. That's now three interceptions in this ballgame. But there's a lot of knowledge to be gleaned every time you throw an interception if you do things the right way. And hasn't there been a pretty darn good quarterback along the way who threw a lot of interceptions early, learned from them, and became great later? Who would that be? That'd be 
31 Peyton Manning through 28 his rookie year. That's the NFL record. How things turn out for him? I think okay. He's a guy in all the commercials now, right? <laughs> yeah, I think he's doing okay. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. He's going to try and do this himself. And maybe the wrong read there is he's going to go down immediately. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. Pretty good job there defensively of stringing that one out. Yeah, you've got a quarterback who's waiting and waiting for something to develop, and it just never materialized, and down he went behind the line of scrimmage. Third and goal, option right. So no gain on the play. They'll decline the penalty to not give them the down back. And were you thinking to yourself that maybe they would take the yardage there? Yeah, because I was. I definitely was. But as you noted, maybe they're just looking at the downs chart and saying, okay, we're comfortable where we are. And his kick is indeed good. And that will extend their lead even further. So that almost certainly the final piece to this puzzle, a three-score lead. I don't think there's any coming back from there. But, you know, normally I'd get on you for giving up on the game right here, but I do think you're right in this case. This late in the game, two scores is tough enough. Three, I'm with you. That seems out of the question. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. Godwin, the motion man. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. Forced out to his left. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. How about this? Should have given that one off as he's going to get hit and taken down behind the line. It's a loss of four on the first down play. Well, the first play of the drive lost four. Now they'll look to move it forward here on second and 14. Off the play fake. Jarrett. A hit as he throws there incomplete. I think he's as fine with that incompletion as a quarterback can be, in all honesty. He avoided his first sack of the game, and he did have a chance of connecting for yardage, just unable to on that throw. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. He's got a man. It's Sutton. That's complete. Touchdown! Colin Sutton, 31 yards. And the Broncos are closing in on a 4 and one start as they extend their fourth quarter lead. He has really settled in throwing the football, and that touchdown here in the fourth quarter gives him a pretty comfortable cushion. He may be a rookie, but he's playing like fourth quarter, and the QB is easy. How about this guy? Youngster, not worried about anything, just cutting it loose and having fun. And here comes a return from the middle of the end zone. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line. So the same result had he opted for the touchback. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds, they've had several turnovers. You would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. You're absolutely right about that, partner, because they're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mentally... I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, okay, how do we put this behind us and get better for the next time out? This, they'll use as motivation for the rest of the time that they play to hopefully never be in this type of situation again. Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. Ball, 
Back to throw. Sharp. And oh my goodness, here's a fifth interception. And he will return this one to the 30-yard line. Well, there's two sides to this coin. I mean, on one side, five interceptions now thrown for him. That's tough. But, man, this defense, they have been ball hawking and impressive. But, Charles, let's flip it back over. If you're coaching a quarterback that's struggling this much at this stage of the game, do you maybe try to get him out? I would think about it, and I think about it awfully hard, but also, you might want to look into his eyes, see what he has. He might be one of those players that you don't want to affect his confidence by actually pulling him out of the game. So you have to know your player, you have to know the situation. They'll roll him out right. Going for a right side here, complete. And he's brought down, but not before a gain of 13, down to the 13. First and 10 in the red zone. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. And they'll try to run the option here. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. Now it looks like he'll throw here. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Well, their passing attack, even though that one was incomplete, has been really sharp in this one. It's resulted in a lot of touchdowns, and it looks like they're not going to stop throwing the football until the very end of this one. Well, that will certainly make everyone involved on offense pretty happy because that gives them all a chance to pad their stats a bit. But as far as the actual need, you and I both know they can just run this clock out because this one, it was over a long time ago. And he's going to be taken down here still a couple yards short of the first. The offense going to stay out there. They've converted once, failed once. What can they do here on fourth down? They didn't get the touchdown, but he did get the first down as he's tackled at the one. Just a gain of three, but they'll certainly take it as they convert on fourth down. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Throw right side, complete to Williams. And he goes backwards on this one. Losing yardage to the seven. from a three score to a four score lead here in the closing moments of the fourth quarter and whether they got that bonus touchdown or not it's been a pretty impressive performance and they did it with not much time left but they took what little time was on the clock and used it well didn't they put a real exclamation point on their win with that score right after right down the middle and this one was over a while ago as they just add on to that big lead He will return this from deep in the end zone. And he'll be brought down shy of the 20, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone, not a good one. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. Well, we said it at halftime that they would need a nearly perfect second half to erase that deficit that they were facing, CD, but unfortunately, the second half has pretty much been a carbon copy of the first. Yeah, that early lead was almost insurmountable the way their opponent was playing. And, partner, they do have some good news, though. This one is getting close to being over, and they can try and hit the reset button starting tomorrow. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. One final shot. They'll look to throw. And this 
this turns into disaster. He's not going to get forward progress. That'll be a safety. So this one will wind up a Denver victory. And we talk so much about the turnover battle, determining who wins, who loses. This game, no exception. Air-free football, no turnovers at all, and they win it. So this is one you don't have to convince your team that what you're saying is accurate. And you know what I'm talking about. Head coach always stands up in front of the team and says, guys, if we do this, this, and this, we'll win. And usually they say, if we win the turnover battle, we'll win. Well, here's the proof right there. Win the turnover battle, go on to victory. Now the guys believe you move on to the next lesson where you have to convince.